Hey there guys, it's Mr. Herbst here, and today our focus is going to be on neurons and the nervous system. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and remove my face for a little bit because there's some big pictures up on the screen and I want to make sure you guys can kind of see the whole thing. Uh, but there are two parts to the nervous system. There is the central nervous system and there is the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system, think center. Uh, that includes things like your brain and your spinal cord. Uh, that is responsible for, of course, you know, if, if it has the brain, it's responsible for thinking, higher order functions, things like that. And also the, the, sp the spinal cord is responsible for uh, reflexes and things like that. Um, the peripheral nervous system, that is all the nerves that are not in the center of your body. Those, that, the peripheral nervous system is primarily uh, responsible for things like sensory, uh, so taking in senses, uh, feel, uh, tastes, whatnot, and also motor functions, um, allowing your body to move. Um, the neuron is the functional unit of the nervous system. The neuron is a type of cell that allows your nervous system to function, and it has several different parts. The dendrites, a uh, cell body, Here's the nucleus of the cell body. The cell body is responsible for taking in um, certain uh, nerve impulses and kind of deciding what to do. It's the, the, the uh, deciding center of that neuron. Uh, the dendrites are responsible for taking in uh, signals. Then the cell body will process the signals. And then if the signal is strong enough, a nerve impulse will be sent down the axon uh, this way and eventually to the axon terminals terminals where they'll connect to another neuron and um, Ultimately the message could continue. We'll talk about that in a second. So uh, From the cell body the nerve impulse will pass down the axon this whole thing right here is called an axon uh, The axon is covered in these things called myelin sheets. They act like little insulators you know how a wire in your house, something that you maybe have your plug into your TV, any wire is covered with rubber. It acts as an insulator, and that's a good thing because if those things weren't there, then the nerve impulse could kind of scatter all over the place, just like how you could get electrocuted if wires were not insulated by rubber. Um, in between some myelin sheets, though, are these things called the node of Ranvier's. Uh, that is where certain ions um, can be transferred in and out right here. Um, it allows for the, uh, the action potential or the nerve impulse to keep passing through. Uh, the Schwann cells are responsible for making the myelin sheets. And so how does the uh, nerve impulse actually work? Well, it all starts with a nerve at rest. The nerve at rest has the potential uh, to produce... Um, a certain voltage, an, an electrical measurable voltage. And what we do is we call that polarized. So when a nerve is at rest, it's called polarized. And at any moment, it can become depolarized. And then a small voltage, up to about 30 to maybe 40 millivolts, can be given off. And then the, the neuron will repolarize. And then it will go back to its, once again, resting potential. And this happens in fractions, fractions of a second. This happens very, very quickly. So at any moment, the neuron will become depolarized, produce some small amount of volts, and then go back to its resting potential. All right, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about the synapse, which is actually where two neurons would communicate. So if I'm going to go back over here, um, there would be another neuron that would connect to the dendrites here some axon terminals from a, from a neuron before this would connect to the dendrites and they would send a message to this neuron. And so ultimately the synapse is where two neurons connect. And one really important thing to understand about the synapse is that they are physically not connected. There is space here. Uh, the electric signal does not actually cross over from one neuron to another. However, um, at the synaptic level, the electric signal signals for uh, neurotransmitters to be released, and then those neurotransmitters will be released into the synaptic cleft, and then they will then the, the neurotransmitters will go into the next uh, neuron, and then that's how the signal is is 
is uh, goes from one neuron to the other. Uh, there are certain drugs that can either inhibit or stop uh, neuro neurotransmitters from crossing over the synaptic cleft, and thus they uh, will ultimately affect the brain function. Um, so we are going to discuss the spinal cord a little bit. The spinal cord is once again responsible for uh, reflex actions. Sometimes uh, you may think that all actions have to be handled by the brain, but that is simply not true. Sometimes certain reflexes can just go to the spinal cord and then back, and then um, uh, you can get the uh, resulting action. Such as, you know, if you go to the doctor and they hit your knee in the right spot, that actually doesn't ever have to go to your brain for processing. Um, it is a simple reflex arc where you, you're, uh, the doctor hits your knee and then your knee jerks and um, that signal is actually never uh, sent to the brain. Now the brain, however, does have four main parts. The cerebrum, the diencephalon, the cerebellum, and the brainstem. The cerebrum is this part right here. Uh, when you basically, when you think of the brain, you're probably thinking of the cerebrum. It is the higher order, big, chunky portion of the brain. It includes all those little folds and stuff. Um, the cerebrum is responsible for, well, we'll talk about it in a second. It's responsible for higher order functions. Uh, the diencephalon is this middle part right here. It's going to include the hypothalamus and the thalamus. We'll talk about that in a second. The cerebellum is this part right back here. Uh, and the brain stem is this part, you know, that's the stem of the brain, the, the, uh, the bottom part, if you will. Um, one important thing to understand about the brain uh, and all of the brain stem and the spinal cord is that it is covered by a membrane called the meninges. Um, so lining all of the brain stem and the spinal cord is a layer called the meninges. Uh, it is a three-layered membrane that protects the brain and the spinal cord. Um, if you may have, you may have heard of the disease called meningitis. That is an inflammation of the meninges, and it can be really, really serious in some individuals. The reason being is because if the meninges get inflamed, well, you're basically inflaming and you're pushing on different parts of the brain and the spinal cord. So clearly you should be able to understand why that could cause some problems. So the first part that we're going to discuss is the cerebrum. That has four parts to it. The, the frontal portion, or the frontal lobe, is um, this part right here in the front. Uh, that is responsible for memory, emotions, planning, judgment, and, um, you know, aggression. Uh, so malfunctions in the frontal lobe um, primarily cause people to be overly aggressive. They don't exhibit proper judgment. They don't plan very well. The parietal lobe is this back portion right here. That's responsible for sensory reception, integration, and smell. Um, also, the temporal lobe is responsible for some smells uh, or for, for some smell processing, but primarily um, it's a place where learning occurs, memory, and hearing. If you look, the temporal lobe is on the side of your head here, right where your ears are. It's primarily responsible for a lot of hearing. And then the occipital lobe is this back lobe right here that is primarily responsible for the visual center. Uh, takes in uh, images that your eyes see. The next part of the brain we're going to talk about is the diencephalon. The diencephalon includes two parts, the hypothalamus and the thalamus. Um, the diencephalon, it might be kind of hard to see, but it is this portion in red right in here. Um, the hypothalamus is the area, it, it helps to maintain homeostasis by different um, hormones that help to regulate sleep, hunger, thirst, body temperature, uh, water balance. It's where a lot of hormones are made and given off that allow your body to do basic functions. And the thalamus is sort of the, um, the uh, sensory input. It, it's, it relays uh, sensory in information to higher order uh, brain function, such as uh, it, it picks up certain senses that, that will eventually be uh, processed by the cerebrum and thinking and, and whatnot. The cerebellum is this portion back here. 
Um, that is primarily responsible for coordination, posture, balance. Uh, a tumor or malfunction in that part of the, the brain right there will uh, not allow a person to maintain proper balance and proper, proper posture. It will make it very difficult for a person to play sports and whatnot. The brain stem has several very important parts to it. The first one I'm going to talk about is the uh, midbrain. That is uh, the relay center between the cerebrum and the spinal cord. The pons is a sort of little bubbly looking bundle of axons uh, right here that is responsible. For, uh, it's another relay station between the medulla oblongata, the, um, the cerebrum, and also the thalamus. Uh, and then also here the medulla oblongata. Think the medulla oblongata is primarily responsible for keeping you alive. It helps to control your heart rate, your breathing, and your blood pressure. It's also a reflex center for important functions such as vomiting, coughing, sneezing, and swallowing. So remember, the, uh, the medulla oblongata is primarily responsible for keeping a person alive. Very important part of the brain. Anyway, guys, that concludes the basic functions of the brain, neurons, and the nervous system. Make sure you complete the Google form below. This is Mr. Herbst. I'm signing off, folks. You all have a nice day.